are Rita Scheinberg. She is a parent and the founder of MC Transitions. Alicia Wopat, who is also a parent and an advocate for individuals with developmental disabilities and the board president of the Self-Directed Advocacy Network. And Debbie Fickenshire, uh, who is also a parent um, and author of the book, The Right to a Full Life. Um, so Rita, if you wanna go ahead and take yourself off mute, um, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, and remember, we have a poll also you're gonna bring up, right? Okay. Um, Welcome to Figuring Out Self-Direction panel. As a long-term member of the Transition Work Group, I am pleased to organize this panel for self-directed services. Hopefully, hopefully the presentations from Alicia, Debbie, and myself will help you on your journey as well in understanding self-direction. First, we would like to put up a poll just to get a picture of where uh, some of you stand. Would you please put up the poll? Okay, are you a family or individual? Individual is a person uh, is a participant in self-direction. So just uh, answer one of those, beginning to plan, leaving school in the next two years, considering switching from a provider base to self-directed, just learning more about SDDA self-directed services or already in self-directed services. So please, uh, we'll give you um, few, 15 seconds to Put your answer in the poll. So Rob or Karen, <laughs> do we have a, oh, good. Thank you, everyone. Okay, great. So hopefully we can help you if you're just learning. Um, remember to put questions in the Q&A, so um, afterwards maybe we can answer a few questions if we have time, and the rest of them will go into FAQ that Karen will be sending out after this um, video, vi the visual conference today. Um, so um, anyway, I'm, we want to start, so thanks for coming, and we will start with Alicia and Debbie and then myself and then the Q&A. Thank you very much. Alicia. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Alicia Wopat. I am the board president of the Self-Direction Advocacy Network of Maryland, uh, which was formed as a 501c3 in 2016. Our mission is to promote and support self-directed individuals, um, to empower people to achieve purposeful and fulfilling lives. Um, I'm also a parent of a 26 year old um, son with autism who's been in self-direction. This is his fifth year and I'll talk a little bit about that later. Self-direction started in Maryland in 2005 by people with developmental disabilities and those who loved him, them. They're based on two um, principles. One is targeting the resources directly to the recipient. And the other is allowing that recipient to choose how to allocate um, those funding. In DDA language, it's called employment authority, where you can hire your own staff, and budget authority, where you decide within certain regulations how you're going to spend your money to create your, your good life. Self-direction can create very unique individualized programs, and SDAN, with a grant from ARC Maryland, created a video called Self-Direction and the Good Life, Many Lives, Many Choices, I'm gonna show you a trailer for that. It's about two minutes. I will put the link to the full 25 minute video um, in the chat question box. So I'll see you at the end of the two minute trailer, um, assuming all goes well with the technology. So hang in there for a second while I share my screen.
choosing to take control of their and their lives. The choice to self-direct can make the remarkable possible. Self-direction is really the best thing you can do for your child and for yourself. Bobby doesn't know the difference of what he what he can or what, what he can't do. And it wouldn't matter to Robbie anyway, because he is so happy with the way his life is. Um, all his needs are always met. He's surrounded by love. He gives love. Now he wants the salad from the Greek place and the pizza from a different place. But that's so cool that, that he's able to um, get across and communicate. It's not always perfect English, but it is beautiful communication. I'm an active person, and I do a lot of stuff. Like, I go to the gym. I'm hoping with my minor that I can, like, start a, um, my own business and become an entrepreneur and design for, like, various companies because my goal is to be skilled in, like, different areas of graphic design so that way I can fulfill, like, any type of task that my company may see. He's able to make progress and grow and become more independent. So he's in a safe place, a happy place, a healthy place. For some people, a good life is the absence of anything bad. So we don't need a big, full life of things. We simply need to be where we want to be, with who we want to be with, doing what we want to do. And that's a person's good life. So I hope that gave you a little taste of um, the movie. The video would give you a much bigger exposure to um, many more people's lives and many more people's choices. Um, people's choices range from being um, advocacies in public, um, you know, pub public uh, arenas to um, doing their own small businesses. Um, it is a remarkable program that can be super individualized to, um, to really anybody's idea of what their life should be. Um, my son started uh, five years ago, um, he, straight out of school. Um, school was not his thing. He was not really wanting to do things between the 8.30 and 2.30 timeframe. Um, didn't really like being told what to do and when to do it. So this has been an awesome um, change for him. Our goals for, for him, um, our self-advocacy, communication, choice, and individual individualization. He chooses who he wants to be with, where he wants to go, when he wants to go there. Um, and we've seen remarkable changes in his ability to communicate his needs and his wants, um, his desires. He's formed really close um, relationships with the staff who work with him. Um, and um, obviously I'm a cheerleader for self-direction. So um, I hope uh, you'll get a little more information uh, from your next presenter, um, Debbie. Thanks again. Hi, I'm Debbie Fikensher. And although you can see that at the bottom of the screen, it says I'm Dorothy. Dorothy is my legal name, but as a child, my initial spelled Deb, and that's why I'm called Debbie by my friends and many of my acquaintances. I'm a retired educator from Montgomery County Public Schools, and I am the parent of twins. And for most of their lives, I was a single parent. Uh, both of my twins have special needs. They, uh, one has Down syndrome and one has Tourette syndrome. Um, when I retired, I wrote a book, The Right to a Full Life. Uh, most people did not challenge my son's right to do what he wanted to do uh, because basically once he got his ticks under control, he was able to go to college. He's a computer uh, technology expert. And quite frankly, if he solves your problems on your computer, you really wouldn't care much about whatever he did or what he wore. Although 
quite honestly, he's a wonderful young man. But uh, my daughter left school in 2005 and she moved into her own apartment in 2014. And her, her classmates in her special program came to her open house and they both, everybody looked at her and they said, how does she do this? Because she didn't read when she left school and she wasn't good at math, but she had daily living skills under her belt. And then we had, when she left school, she went into a provider agency and she was there for about four years until we got tired of the continually revolving door about the people who worked for her. And we decided in 2009 to go to self-direction. Self-direction has been wonderful. You saw in the short trailer, the range of abilities that um, the young people had under self-direction. Self-direction really is a person-centered program. My daughter has flourished and become far more self-sufficient in self-direction because in self-direction, she is the employer. She got a federal employment identification number. She has the power to hire and fire staff. She decides how her funds from DDA will be spent, but she isn't in it alone. She has a federal a financial management service who actually handles the money, pays, writes the check to pay her staff, writes the check to pay her taxes, uh, disperses the checks to pay for any of the um, expenses that she has to pay for in the budget, uh, the fees that are due for the um, authorized budget items. And she has, just like she did when she was in the the uh, traditional provider. She has a coordinator of community services who attends her meetings, uh, makes sure she complies with the regulations, does the documentation, and checks on her quarterly. She also has, because I have more years behind me than ahead of me, I have been recruiting uh, cousins and members of my family and her friends I've been recruiting a team. Think of it as a board of directors so that when we have meetings, there are a number of people who either attend by phone or in person who are more aware of what's going on in Elaine's life so that should I not be around, and we know that's going to happen at some point, they are more aware of what's happening in Elaine's life and what works and what doesn't work. Um, so this is a kind of special aspect of Elaine's company. She has a team who's uh, aware of what's happening. Uh, her brother is her support broker. Uh, that used to be required. Now it's an optional service, but he's also very aware of what's going on in her life and in her team. But the point here is that she's not alone, nor am I alone. I will say uh, the biggest challenge for us, for my daughter, when we started was figuring out how do we find staff? Well, I will tell you that the biggest challenge was the biggest advantage because we started in 2009 and the two people we hired, part-time staff, she doesn't have a big budget, are still with her today. And imagine having staff for 11 years means you have built relationships that have a meaningful impact on her day. She would introduce her counselor as the best counselor in the whole world. Those relationships have made a tremendous positive impact on the quality of our life. And of course, the other advantage of self-direction is it really is person-centered. During the pandemic, because it's a flexible program, she was able to shift how the money was spent. So it, she, she never had any challenge that she might have to leave her living arrangement to go someplace else. She, you know, people were able to adapt and come to her on an adapted schedule. So my daughter has thrived. She beca has become more self-sufficient. And I hope that explains the business aspect of self-direction. So I turn it over to you, Rita.
Thank you, Alicia and Debbie. I'm so glad you could join us today. Um, I, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about my son um, and our situation before we to go we go on to Q and A, since um, you see everyone's different, and my son is definitely different too. Um, my son graduated the high school diploma in 2005, and he had emerging skills, but he also had significant autism spectrum disorder, um, some intellectual delays, and also mental health disabilities, which really affected his life. At the time, we decided to go with a provider agency. Um, we, Robert, several years trying to work with a, a provider agent, however, proved not to work for him. He was dropped suddenly from what by one agency because he had a mental health crisis. And then when we finally were able to get a second provider, they were unable to fill his staffing needs. So we, I learned, he learned, and then we together uh, moved to self-direction, which puts Robert at the center of the program. As it turned out, uh, the advantages of self-direction far outweighed the work that went into creating his, his initial plan. Uh, Robert has now been a participant of um, self-direction for 12 years. He's 35 years old. Um, each year, Robert and his team make the plan centered on his life choices. Um, Robert has, as has already been described, has both budget and employee authority. And uh, as stated in DDA waiver, and the funds he received is fortunately managed by the fiscal management service. So we don't have to write checks or anything like that. Um, being the center of the plan has been very good for Robert as we can adjust the plan to meet his changing needs and, and he can learn independence at his own pace. If he has a bad day, he has a bad day and we adjust things. He doesn't get dropped. Uh, living independently in his own place with peer relationships has always been important to Robert. The flexibility of self-direction allowed us to hire integrated living opportunities called ILO as a vendor to assist him with living in the community. Information about ILO is in the YouTube video gallery. Results for Robert is that now he's in his own apartment, however, in a complex with eight other guys who have their own apartments um, and are ILO self-advocates. So he has made self-directed peer relationship with some of the guys in the group. ILO and self-directed staff provide the supports so he can participate in all the ILO programs. A job is very important for Robert because he likes to have his own spending money. Recently, he started a new 25 hour a week job at Goodwill and support is needed from his DDA self-directed staff and also from Goodwill. Robert loves his job as a donation tenant because he's busy with lots of different tasks. And he loves now having more money in his debit account and he has learned to use his money much more responsibility. It's taken a while, but he really has. Hiring staff that care and respect him is very important. Robert has three staff through the week. One has worked for Robert since 2008 and the other two for at least several years. He's learned to take better care of his health and hygiene. He now brushes his teeth for two minutes every morning and night with the help of Alexa Echo. He has lost over 60 pounds, uh, takes care of his apartment, and now even goes clothes shopping on his own with his staff. And even during the pandemic, life has changed drastically. Robert's staff continues to work with him and help him with the COVID guidelines. Um, he gets reminders he gets reminders and support from self-directed staff and vendors as needed for all kinds of virtual sessions, including doctor's appointments, ILL meetings, and other in and, and, and virtual personal training. He has ILO friends and he can communicate when he gets frustrated and he can visit his family who lives three miles from him and he goes to work with supports through self-direction. Self-direction continues to be a great program for Robert and I, Oh, and, as it's, and as it is about his desires and his needs and can easily change as Robert changes. Hopefully Alicia, Debbie and our family's experience help you on your own road to figuring out self-directions. Hope you please put questions in Q&A and, and we'll try to answer a few of the questions.
Thank you very much. All right. Thank you all. Uh, we do have a couple of questions that have come in. Um, the first one, uh, Debbie, I think you, you spoke a little bit about, but um, <clears throat> how does self-direction work when family members are no longer able to be the case managers? In, in the event of an emergency, who would help the person with the disabilities navigate and what safety nets are in place if there are problems? Oh, sorry, Debbie, you're muted. There we go. In part of your planning, you're supposed to identify your emergency plans. You know, what's going to happen if, if, if there is an emergency. Um, I am actively, because I'm older, um, I'm actively trying to remedy that by building this team so that there are a number of people, not just one, who know what's going on in my daughter's life and who would be, you know, at first, I'll just say at first I thought, oh, well, I'll get my brother, but my brother's really not involved in my, even though he's local, he's not as involved. So I, what I, my answer is, it's like all things I try, because her brother does, it lives a mile away and is very much aware of what his twin sister is doing and would never do anything that would violate her independence. So he's one person, but he's also her age and working. I have tried to build in other people who could help. But what DDA is worried about is what would you do in an emergency like she hurt herself? They're not worried about what, what would happen if there was a decision to be made. I'm worried also about the decision making and the planning. Are, wouldn't you agree, Alicia? Alicia? Yes, I guess I wanted to uh, lay some fears that um, we, we sort of alluded to, but really didn't talk about the, t it's a team approach. Um, so you have the participant themselves. Hopefully there are some um, advocates, friends, loved ones, family, but some group from some people from those groups who would be part of the team, as Debbie was saying. But there's also um, a support broker that you can, it's an optional service, but you can have a support broker. There's the liaison between DDA and the participant called a CCS, a Coordinator of Community Service. And so you build a team. It's not the participant and the mom and dad. It should be a team of people so that if the worst case happened and somebody, something happened to someone, <clears throat> excuse me, there would be this remainder of the team who would be able to find the way forward. So there are plenty of people, not the majority, who don't have family um, as their, you know, predominant backup and advocate. So it's, but it is a matter, as Debbie was saying, about the team preparing uh, for what happens um, after we're gone or if something were to happen uh, as an emergency. Um, so I hope that helps a little. I have one more thing. I, I have, I don't have much family in the area and my, and his, and uh, Robert's brother lives in Seattle, Washington and is in his young father right now. So I'm working with um, Integrated Living Opportunities and Plan of Maryland to put together the financial plan and the um, management and the help for him so that long term uh, he will have support even when uh, my husband and I can't support him anymore. Well, and I, I, I didn't mention it, but I also belong to uh, By Their Side and ILO. So yeah, I, the easy part is hiring people to provide that service, but I've also tried to incorporate unpaid people as well. So, but remember, it's a team, it's a community effort. It's not, you're not, the worst thing you can do is think of this as just mom, dad, and the self-advocate, because it, it's a team effort. And mm -hmm. DDA wants it to be a team effort. The CCS is a very important person on this. And I'm lucky that my CCS is a very capable individual and has been with us for about five years. 
And one one question that just came in um, just mentions that uh, you know you do mention a team a good bit, um, and they're just curious: are there um, agencies that support setting up a team? Is that does that kind of fall to the CCS? Does it fall to the parents? It's yeah. individual. <clears throat> uh, the STAN, the Self Directed Advocacy Network, has can support that effort. There are lots of people who can help you, but it's such an individual. It, the whole idea of self-directing is to build this around the individual. So um, it's unique to the family and to the individual. Wouldn't you agree, ladies? Yeah, yes. I think definitely, it definitely is. But I, mm -hmm. I think, you know, in, an, in the initial phases, you would have the CCS that liaison, you would have the participant, hopefully there would be a friend, an advocate, a family member of the individual. And from that little core group, you start expanding the team, the team is the staff you hire, the team can be, you know, extended family, the team can be your next door neighbor who has known this person forever and ever. Um, there's no way it has to be. There are the only thing that actually has to be there is the participant, obviously, and the the CCS that is the liaison between DDA and and the participant. Good. And we only have a couple of minutes left here. Uh, but we have a whole bunch of questions. So if we're not able to get to the questions, we'll certainly put together an FAQ uh, and send that out to everybody. Right. Um, <clears throat> Just two quick questions. Um, can you speak to the time commitment and expectations parents would experience with self-directed services? The hardest part, the most work goes in setting it up the first year. After it's set up the first year, it's much easier. Um, when I was right. a support broker, I helped families set up. And the hardest part is really the first year and I've done it in two weeks because some families got dropped from this from an agency and they had two weeks to get the plan and budget in for uh, self-direction in no more than two weeks and they got it done. But uh, it can drag out if you have a lot of time, but uh, you're basically, your young person has a dollar amount usually associated with them when you start and you plan around that. There is one thing that I didn't mention, but when we shifted from an agency to self-direction, we didn't have much money. But my daughter went from 15 hours of support to 30 because we were so much more efficient in our use of the money. So she got more service, not less, because she was able to design what she wanted to do. It was a great game changer. Um, <clears throat> we are basically out of time, but I did just want to do one more question because a couple people um, asked it, but how do you find the staff through self-directed? There's an, a number of ways that oh. it worked best for mm -hmm. us um, was um, we transferred right from high school. So I asked, asked his, uh, my son's one-to-one -one aide who started, who no one asked if he would be interested in making the switch, and he did. People use Indeed.com, Care.com. Um, if you're, if the participant has an area of interest, uh, rock climbing or something, you can put up signs in those different places um, to help assist you. And the support broker can also help assist you um, in uh, finding finding the staff. The the greatest piece about the self direction and the staff piece, when Typically, when you're in an agency, the staff does rotate quickly um, without an ability to really get to know the individual. And because uh, most self-direction people are able to pay a little bit more, we're able to keep the staff longer. I mean, both of these ladies have staff for, uh, you know. 11 years. Okay, yeah. So we've had one staff for five years. And then, um, and then we've had some that have come and and gone as well. Um, but the main staff has, has pretty much stayed with us. And so it is a bit of a challenge, but it's mm -hmm. so much worth it because then you get, you get a, a group of uh, people who know your, your, your son, your daughter, your the participant. 